Even though Formula 1 fans talk regularly about the modern champions, they have less idea about the champions who competed in the early stages of the championship. So this video is dedicated to someone like that, who was able to win the first ever F1 title for the great Ferrari team which is considered as the most successful constructor in history. You may have heard about him as he is the last F1 champion from Italy up to this date, despite there being a number of Formula 1 teams based in Italy. He is Alberto Ascari, who was able to win the 1952 and 1953 Formula 1 titles, being Ferrari's sole Italian champion. But before we proceed, hit the subscribe button and smash the bell icon for more exciting updates. Alberto joined motorsport by following the footsteps of his father, Antonio Ascari, who was a very talented and famous racing driver in the 1920s. However, he lost the affection of his father at a very young age, as Antonio died due to an accident during the 1925 French Grand Prix. But his interest for racing never vanished because of this incident. In the early days of his career, Alberto was involved in motorcycle racing. First, he partnered with the Bianchi team at the age of 19. Then, he got the opportunity to compete in the prestigious Milamilia race using an Auto Avio Costruzioni 815, which was supplied by one of his father's close friends, Enzo Ferrari. That was his first racing experience on four wheels. But in the 1940s, he started to compete more regularly on four wheels than motorcycles. However, his racing career was paused for a brief time period when Italy joined World War II. He turned this one into a business opportunity by supplying services to military vehicles with the help of another racing driver, Luigi Villarizzi. At the end of the war, he started competing in the Grand Prix using a Maserati 4 CLT, and Villarizzi became his partner. Ascari was able to build his reputation as a racing driver by winning a number of racing events all over Europe. Then Ascari and Villarizzi were hired alongside with Raymond Summer for the first ever Formula 1 championship in 1950. However, the Tipo 125 was not a competitive package to beat the dominant Alfa Romeo challengers. Throughout the 1951 season, Ascari became a constant headache to the Alfa Romeo drivers, but his efforts became useless with the poor reliability of the Ferrari challengers, and he finished the season two points behind Juan Manuel Fangio, who won the championship. He missed the first race of the 1952 season in order to participate in the qualifying round of the Indianapolis 500. Then, he returned to Europe and won the next six rounds to clinch the 1952 world title. In addition, the Italian racing driver was able to win five non-championship races as well. He brought that winning form to the following season, winning three more races at the beginning of the 1953 season. So he was able to maintain a long winning streak until the 1953 French Grand Prix. Despite losing the fourth race of the season, Ascari was able to record two more victories, becoming the first ever two-time world champion in Formula 1 history. Despite his great success with the Maranello-based team for more than two seasons, Ascari left the team ahead of the 1954 season due to a dispute over his salary. However, the Lancia challenger was not ready ahead of the season, and the team owner Gianni Lancia allowed him to drive for Maserati and Ferrari until their machine was ready. The 1954 season, though, was a total disaster for the defending champion even after the Lancia D50 was ready to compete. But the Ascari and Lancia combination got a promising start to the 1955 season, and everything was under their control until the 1955 Monaco Grand Prix. Ascari crashed into the harbour at high speed through sandbags and hay bales after missing the chicane. Ascari and his Lancia disappeared into the Mediterranean Sea within a few seconds, leaving only an oil slick and a steam of bubbles. After three seconds, his pale blue helmet appeared on the sea, and he escaped with only a broken nose. This accident happened on the 22nd of May 1955, and was given a special dispensation by Lancia for a speedy recovery. On May 26th, Ascari went to see the practice session of his friend Eugenio Castellotti at Monza in his new Ferrari 750 Monza sports car. They planned to be the co-drivers of the 1,000km Monza race, but he had no plan to be involved in the practice session as a driver. Ascari had no safety instruments, but decided to try a few laps wearing the helmet of Castellotti. In the third lap, 
he experienced a fatal crash at high speed and died within a few minutes as multiple injuries were caused. He faced this accident at Curva del Violone of Monza, and it was renamed in his honor as Variante Ascari. Ascari's death is considered as one of the most mysterious and unresolved ones in motorsport history because of the similarities of the deaths of Alberto Ascari and his father Antonio Ascari. Both were 36 years of age when they faced those fatal accidents, and both were killed within a span of four days after facing serious injuries. Both Alberto and Antonio faced accidents at the exit of fast but easy left-hand corners. They each were able to record 13 Grand Prix victories before their deaths and left behind a wife and two children. Italy lost this great talent when there was still enough energy within him to clinch more titles. On his funeral day, the whole Milan city was filled with one million silent mourners dressed in black. It is said that 15 carriages were needed to carry the profusions of wreaths and flowers. Finally, Alberto Ascari was laid to rest next to his father in Milan Cemetery. That is how the career of a great Formula 1 driver ended in a tragic way. Ascari's name is still pronounced in each race at Monza due to Variante Ascari, but the modern generation has only little idea about this great Formula 1 driver who shaped the sport in the early stages of the championship. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel to get more exciting Formula 1 news. See you in the next video, guys. Goodbye.